everyone and thank you for joining in. As the new month of September begins, we are back with our monthly series, The Month Gone By in Automotive Industry. Here we bring to you the key insights, highlights and the latest updates from the month of August. Joining us today is Mr. Rajesh Menon, Director General of the Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers. Mr. Manish Singhania, President of the Federation of Automobile Dealers Association and Mr. Saket Mehra, partner at Grand Thornton Bharat. First off, uh, we observe that August is a second consecutive month where the top three OEMs, namely Maruti Suzuki, Hyundai and Tata Motors have reported a year-on-year -year drop in their dispatches to the dealers. To begin with, um, Mr. Menon, I would like to join, uh, I would like you to join in and help us understand here. Do we see this as a measure to correct the production schedules by the OEMs where the industry realizes that it has been dispatching way more than the actual demand in the market? So uh, thank you for the opportunity, Shubangi. From a, while we wait for formal figures of SIAM on the wholesale data, but from whatever little data we have in the public domain of OEMs, what they released, I think we are seeing a, a slight degrowth in wholesale sales uh, continuously ever since we saw it in, in the month of July and obviously in the month of August. So the yes, one clearly one clear indication or one clear reference is that there is a calibration happening of wholesale sales uh, in alignment with the dealer stocks, and uh, we uh, we are very hopeful that in the coming months we'll, again I'm sure we'll talk about it later, but I'm in the coming months we'll see that uh, wholesale picking up again. All right, uh, let me now go across to uh, Mr. Singhania. Like first, like what is the average inventory level at the dealerships right now? Now. And second, with the division and dispatch numbers uh, from major OEMs during July and August two months, do you see the current stock situation as optimal and sustainable for the industry going forward, considering we're also expecting uh, a lot of festivities in October? So, uh, hello, Shravangi and everyone on the panel. First of all, uh, uh, we did our, in our last report in uh, the month of July, the stock levels had gone up from uh, 67 days to 72 days. So that's a very high stock level amount uh, in quantity wise. It comes to around 7.3 lakh vehicles. And uh, in terms of uh, amount, it comes out to minimum 70,000 crore vehicle, worth of vehicles. And looking at the uh, what Rajesh uh, rightly said, we don't have the exact figures, but the uh, figures that are coming out, we are seeing a wholesale of almost three point close to 3.54, 3.55 wholesale. And the tentative retail that uh, this month we are going to see, including you know uh, a part a percentage that we calculate for Telangana, would be close to I think uh, 3.25. So again, the uh, wholesale uh, minus the retail difference would be there, and uh, wholesales would be almost 30,000 vehicles more than. Uh, the retails seemingly so definitely the dealer stock would cross 70 days plus that's a clear indication for now and uh, uh, i think few of the oems have definitely initiated a uh, total praise for them but uh, it has to be an all-round effort all the oems need to understand the uh, high in inventory level at the dealership uh, few oems and the dealers also are kind of you know pressurized during the uh, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, during the festive season and they want to keep all kind of vehicles in their stocks so that they are able to address their consumer demand. So dealers also would be at some point, you know, building up uh, uh, stocks so that they can address the festive demand. But uh, inventory days crossing the baseline of base of uh, 70 days would be, you know, I think uh, probably an all time high inventory that uh, dealership would be seeing. I just wish uh, everything is looking positive. I just wish that the festival goes good and we come back to some, you know, reasonable level. Otherwise, it would be very tough time and hard time for the dealerships. But we have also seen a lot of discounting on the models, almost all the models actually. So, uh, should the consumers expect similar discounts to continue for September as well? Whenever there is a uh, inventory pressure, obviously the discounts uh, tend to go up uh, in every form. OEM have to support dealers in liquidating uh, stocks. So the uh, discounting keeps on going up. And I think this is uh, one of the, uh, even before season, we are at an all-time high discount. So I don't expect much from the season because the uh, 
season discount as we say uh, because already we are at a very all time high discount and maybe few uh, uh, two for two four percent increase would be there maybe just because of the festive season and more so ever festive season is only in one month uh, both the dashara uh, navratra and the pauli so there would be intense pressure and on managing stocks and uh, managing customers and liquidating vehicles so uh, definitely is, uh, and there is also a two types of category in the dealerships now where few models or variants are amply stocked at the dealership which are attracting heavy discounts and with every oem there are couple of models which are at, you know they continue to be in waiting period so there is a shortage of those vehicles so while the one side uh, there is a heavy discounting on few models and uh, on one other side there are models available at the dealership which are commanding no discounts or in fact they are commanding waiting periods mr menon going forward uh, towards the festivities do you see the oems uh, walking up the same uh, measures on the dispatches or will they come back to will they increase going forward in the next two months i think shubhangi one, one important fact is that oems and their respective dealer fraternity i think they there is a clear understanding and reflection that they need to continue to work much more closely on achieving up, uh, optimal mental level so with that in mind you saw as i mentioned in the beginning you saw some of those uh, some of those calibration which happened in the month of august and earlier in july so that that understanding is very much there and it's a it's a relationship between the oem and the dealers and and depends a lot on individual strategy of each oem so uh, and and as as manish ji also mentioned we are looking forward to a very good festive season so i guess uh, uh, we will we will see a better uh, uh, correction if i can use that word uh, in the coming months but uh, there is something which is uh, very well understood and there is already change happening at at the oem levels got it uh, mr mehra i would like to bring you in here uh, consumers have been talking about the demand uh, in the passenger vehicle segment category wise so we have seen consumers have been demanding the suv style vehicles and this has been a long standing trend in the industry by now but a portion of the industry also believes the small cars or hatchbacks as we call them uh, will make a return by the next two years what is your view on this considering you have been tracking the industry from uh, different stakeholders point of view uh, a lot of oems have lined up new model launches in the suv category and the average selling price of the vehicles has gone up tremendously over the past years so how do you see the industry moving towards the suv trend only in the next uh, like one or two years or uh, there could be a uh, momentum for the hatchbacks as well So Shivangi, to answer first uh, about the SUV trend, I think you rightly pointed out over the last few years we have seen a significant uh, shift. I would say from various segments to the SUV segment. I think that we we are seeing some kind of a shift gradually happening, and this shift is largely happening because there is larger amount of population which still rides on two wheelers who want to come on to the four wheeler. Uh, there is a greater, I would say, uh, disposable income which people now have. gradually as compared to what they used to have say five years back so we'll have many more entry level segment cars being there on the road is what we forecast at least over the next uh, over the next few months or maybe of next few years uh, that's a trend which we foresee to happen uh, but i think broadly it would still remain a customer market uh, the oems or the car makers will he will have to keep on adapting and ad- adopting the preferences the needs and the choices which the end consumers make got it but there are no new models uh, in the entry level segment a lot of the top oems have already backed out from the segment so can we expect new models coming in uh, from the small car segment in the next two years uh well i i believe there would be a, a kind of a re a remodel which would happen of the existing models possibly with more amount of features with more amount of uh, flexibility or the choices to be given to the end consumers if not necessarily a new set of model to be coming in okay got it yeah. coming back to you mr menon for two wheelers uh, we see there are green shoots on a year on year basis well we must remember that this comes on the last uh, low base uh, effect of the last year help us understand the specific factors leading up to this demand for this year i think shubhangi what's happening is ever since january this year we have started seeing a pickup in two wheeler demand and it's uh, it's been it's a sustained pickup it we are seeing sustained growth it's in double digit growth we are seeing and that trend will continue and i think festival season will give it more momentum and largely one of the reasons what we are seeing clearly is the pickup in up, uh, uptake in 
rural demand. I think that is clear difference which is which is coming up, and that will uh, that trend will continue. And we are very hopeful that we should be able to come very close to the 2018-19 peak of two wheelers, which we have, which is 21 million. We may not cross it, but we'll come very close to it this year. Got it. So rural is the way to go. And Mr. Singhania, unlike the passenger vehicle segment, do you expect the retail demand in two wheelers moving in line with the wholesales for the rest of the year? I mean, uh, for the two wheeler industry, it's very much in line. The paid up stock is hovering around 15, 17 days in two wheeler, and uh, OEMs are doing up. In fact, in few of the OEMs, dealers were uh, regularly complaining about the shortage of vehicle, heavy shortage of vehicle. They were not able to manage a decent paid up stock level also. So, I think uh, uh, what Mr. Miran rightly said that since January, it has really started kicking in, numbers are uh, really moving. Uh, rural demand has definitely picked up. And uh, now with the government uh, uh, increasing the MSP of uh, all Kharif products and an additional outflow of almost 35,000 crore in, uh, for this uh, uh, increase in MSP. And plus we have, this time we have now above average monsoon also. All this will increase the quantity and quality of production of Kharif crop. And uh, uh, it will definitely uh, increase the rural uh, fund flow also. Uh, I think a very positive uh, for the two-wheeler industry. And uh, I really wonder why this is not getting, you know, uh, further uh, reflecting in the entry-level segment uh, now. Because that was the entry-level passenger car segment, because that was the expectation. When the rural, rural demand picks up, the entry-level passenger car would also pick up somewhere or the other, but uh, right now it is not reflecting. But definitely, uh, the two-wheeler industry continues to grow, and uh, every month we are clocking decent numbers, and uh, the paid-up stock also continues to be at a very comfortable level with the two-wheeler dealers. Got it. Also help us understand the demand momentum in the electric two-wheeler segment. For the data that we have received as of now, uh, during August, the industry has clocked retail sales of about 88,400 units. This is down from over 1 lakh units in July. And the government's electric mobility promotion scheme also comes to an end on September 30th. So two things like one, what could be the reason for sales drop in this category from July to August? And second, how do you see this developing till the end of March for the fiscal 25? I think uh, a lot of confusion was there regarding the extension of the EMPS uh, scheme and finally it got extended in September. And uh, I think uh, uh, I, I see it as a temporary blip in the uh, sales of, that, of this particular month. I don't think as a it is a, as a trend, and uh, uh, now we are seeing all the legacy players in the Indian market entering the EV two wheeler space, uh, and now they have a brand value that connects with the customers. Plus, their dealerships are spread across the length and breadth of India, uh, and plus uh, uh, they have this you know uh, trust uh, uh, of the customer that they will be able to service the vehicle. So all this uh, uh, we just saw in August. We are seeing you know. Uh, TBS and uh, uh, probably Bajaj, the combine is, you know, al almost equaling to Ola sales. So these legacy players will definitely, with their own range of models and uh, uh, more choices to the customers, they will bring up in uh, coming years or coming months. And uh, uh, two-wheeler industry is, uh, EV two-wheeler industry has started moving. Uh, the acceptance is there. Uh, the, there's a now different customer base there. And... Uh, what we need is excitement in the market, more models, more schemes, and more choices to the customer. I think uh, this industry will continue to move in the future also. Mr. Mehra, what is your view on the subsidies for the electric two-wheelers? I ask this because uh, the current scheme ends on by the end of this month. Also, do you think like last calendar year, the industry was a little bit short of uh, checking on the 1 million mark. Do you see the industry crossing that this year? Well, uh, Shubhangi, frankly, in our view, uh, electric vehicle industry is or will face some amount of challenges. And I'll tell you why, because if you look at on one side, the government has been wanting to come up with subsidies, the FAME scheme that we saw, FAME 1, FAME 2, and now the PMP. But at the same time, there is a lot of emphasis on the localization, which is also being uh, you know, focused by the government. So what it means is that uh, it puts a lot of pressure any which ways on the either the component manufacturers or even the OEMs for that matter. I'm talking about the electric two-wheelers. Uh, with respect to the investments that they need to be making, 
uh, which also adds up to the cost. And eventually, you know, it's a question whether that cost gets passed on to the customer or gets absorbed by the manufacturers themselves. So I think there is going to be some stress which will continue particularly on the electric two-wheeler side. Um, as far as your question on the volumes are concerned, yes, you're right. Last year was uh, was kind of an exceptional year. This year uh, looks unlikely as we speak, because as Mr. Singhani also pointed out, uh, there have been challenges with respect to the volume uptake uh, on the electric two-wheeler side. But maybe with a lot of fleet operators coming together and committing uh, to more sustainable goals, uh, hopefully this volume should go up, but may or may not reach that 1 million mark, which we talked about. Okay, Mr. Menon, do you agree? What is your point of view on this? I think from a two-wheeler perspective, I, I think we are quite more optimistic on, on, on it. Uh, and we are very, very hopeful I, uh, that Fame 3 will be announced very soon. I think moment when three gets announced, you will find a further momentum to go for because EMTS is a was a short term scheme uh, valid for four months, and as was mentioned, there is there are some uh, local uh, guidelines which are brought into the scheme. So once fame three comes in place, I think we will see a lot of uh, push and a lot of momentum coming in the market. I think electric two wheeler and as well as Manishji mentioned, with all the legacy players coming in, I think we are looking at scale. Uh, what number we'll end up with, I'm not too sure, but there is we are very very optimistic that we will see a large push you know, on the back of the Fame 3 scheme and also back of many of our uh, legacy players entering the market. Okay. Uh, moving on, Mr. Mehra, please also help us understand on the commercial vehicle side. On the whole, how is the momentum and do we see any challenges ahead? Well, uh, Shubhangi, frankly, commercial vehicles, I would say, uh, is one segment which uh, has to be correlated with the overall economic growth. Uh, if you look at the data which got released by the government last week, uh, there's been a 6.7% growth, at least in the Q1 uh, that we saw for the economy. And uh, if we were to compare it or if we were to correlate with the auto volumes, we see a similar trend. For example, in Q1 of the previous financial year, there was roughly around 8, 8.2% growth that we had. And the volumes had also gone up as compared to the previous quarter. Uh, so I think there is fairly a correlation which exists between the GDP growth and the automobile volumes growth. Particularly if I were to talk about uh, commercial vehicles, now if we look at the growth that we saw in the Q1, the GDP growth, uh, and we, if we look at across all the sectors within the industries, um, you know, manufacturing and construction was at the top, you know, followed by all the other sectors. The only sector which got impacted to a certain extent was manufacturing. Now, Again, if we were to look at or correlate those numbers, particularly for commercial vehicles, they may not be correlated particularly. And uh, there are reasons unknown for it as to why there is not, uh, we are not seeing such such kind of an uptick in the commercial vehicle space. Uh, but I think largely if you look at the, what we are seeing in August or what we saw in July is an outfall of what how the economy overall performed in Q1. So as the economic activity bounces back, hopefully those numbers should also be reflected on the positive side. And before we go ahead, uh, one important highlight from the last month uh, was also about the vehicle scrappage policy. Uh, just uh, for our audience uh, to bring this up, last week, Minister Nitin Gadkari announced that the auto manufacturers have agreed to offer discounts between 1.5% and 2.75% on commercial and passenger vehicles against a scrappage certificate of an old vehicle for a limited period of one or two years. Now, we'll have to see how the policies impact on the um, industry sales going forward but uh, before we go one quick question for each one of you uh, do you think uh, this festive season could be the best ever season uh, sales that the industry has observed um, we'll start with Mr. Menon here yeah Shwangi, I think we are very bullish and very optimistic about the upcoming festive season and uh, it starts in September with Ganesh Chaturthi and Unam so, and uh, we, I would say that we're optimistic from not just passenger vehicle side, but also two wheelers, three wheelers, and even commercial vehicles. So next two to now months from beginning September, we are, uh, we are very ho hopeful and very optimistic about the demand. Okay. And Mr. Singhania, if you agree, what are the tailwinds? And if you do not, what could be the headwinds? So the uh, strong, strongest point is that, uh, uh, last year, we didn't have the rural demand in place and uh, there was that is where the industry was lacking. And the urban demand now still continues to, you know, uh, give us numbers and add to, add to that, the rural demand would be there. So I think uh, overall, it would be a very good uh, uh, festive season 
we are also looking out for very uh, good launches also happening across the board lot of oems are coming with uh, new models and all this will bring uh, enough excitement in the passenger as well as uh, uh, two wheeler market and uh, plus the good rainfall overall uh, monsoon has a very strong presence in our uh, mindset and uh, way we work uh, good monsoon definitely will uh, have a positive effect on our, on this festival season so overall it is positive and uh, i think uh, if uh, uh economic condition uh, interest rates are stable everything is you know we are uh, kind of uh, geared up for the festival season uh i right now i don't see any negativity happening in for the festival season i cannot definitely quote uh, that it would be an all time high because last year we definitely created lot of records and uh, breaking those records would be tough because those are huge numbers but uh, if we if the industry is able to sail through or break through then it would be Uh, close to a single digit, uh, almost four five percent. That's what we had predicted, and uh, that kind of uh, even that kind of growth, achieving that kind of growth at at, at such a halt, uh, high number would definitely good for the industry. Yeah, but a lot of new launches are scheduled. But do you see them converting into sales? So it all depends on the supply. Also, launches are attracting. Uh, we are seeing good bookings on uh, launches, and majority all the launches are happening on the SUV front. and that is where the excitement is so uh, the traction is very good so even if a customer comes for asking for that particular product maybe that product would be available or not available or customer takes it at a later point of time but finally we have a customer so the dealerships tend to you know pitch for the existing products that are available at the showroom good walk in for any dealership for any business is very good uh, uh, you know, uh, point to observe and the highest conversion that we observe is on the a uh, walk-ins also so uh, new launches definitely bring in a fresh new walk-ins at the dealership right got it mr mera i'll come to you like since the beginning of the year because the last year was a very high base every player every um, association has been pointing out to a single digit growth what do you think uh, for the fiscal 25 on the industry as a whole well shubhangi there are many factors which uh, will play a very significant role uh, we have seen what's been happening in our neighboring countries the geopolitical scenario i think the global growth rate has been around 3 3.5% but yes india seems to be pretty stable as we have seen quarter on quarter yes there has been some kind of an impact if we sequentially look at the growth but these factors will play a very significant role in determining as to where we end the year the fi25 in terms of the volumes as we speak and i would agree with mr menon and mr singhania both that uh, we are fairly optimistic at least when we speak to our clients in the sector everyone is uh, is uh, pretty optimistic uh, at least with the order book that they have in on hand for the next quarter at least uh, plus with the general you know uh, the general optimism which is existing you look at any other sector like a real estate or say for example the consumer durables uh the rural demand particularly and i would like to go back to the point which mr singhania was saying that uh, was mentioning that uh, rural demand is yet to pick up but our our kind of point of view says that hopefully over the next 6 uh, months of this financial year we will see a rural uptick at least on the consumer durables as well as on the auto vehicles so all put together uh, very optimistic as to where we will close uh, certainly it should be a double digit that's what our wish would be okay let's hope well, the- it seems it seems uh, not only the auto retail numbers auto shares would also definitely get an uptick during after the festival or during the festival <laughs> right true sure. the next two months are anyway critical for the industry so let's just hope for the best and on that note i would like to wrap up our discussion and thank all the panelists for taking up the time and the audience for being patient listeners thanks again have a good day and for more updates stay tuned to et auto thank you